There are key moments in history where nothing is ever the same again. One of those moments in cinema history is 1977 Star Wars. Y'all might know it as Episode 4, A New Hope. But back in 1977, we knew it as Star Wars. I have a question for y'all. Why did Star Wars have such a massive impact on the culture? I mean, in the late 70s, you couldn't get away from it. It was everywhere. Donnie and Marie. I mean, flippin' Donnie and Marie were doing Star Wars-themed dance numbers on their variety show. I have another question for y'all. Why did every movie that came after in the franchise have less and less of a cultural impact? Yeah, they were more than successful, but they became niche. They lost the mainstream audience. I have an answer. Battle over interpretation. This is an age-old fight. The artist, in this case George Lucas, and his interpretation of Star Wars versus the audience's interpretation of Star Wars. Spoiler, this is a fight the audience is going to win every single time. I can't act so I cast. Before we get into interpretation, we need to talk about context. What was going on in America in 1977 that made the movie going public so receptive to Star Wars' message? The country was still reeling from the aftermath of Watergate. Inflation was getting so high, the federal government has since changed the way they calculate inflation so it can never get that high again. Crime was everywhere. You couldn't get away from it. Inner cities had become war zones. Corruption? It was out in the open in your face. Governments, institutions, corporations, they were grinding down the little guy, spitting in their face, daring them to do something about it. The 70s weren't a good time to be going to the movies if you just wanted to get away from your problems for a few hours and enjoy yourself. What you got instead? Nihilism, lectures, and finger wagging. The television series Star Trek was described as Wagon Train to the Stars, a reimagining of a classic Western motif, exploration of undiscovered country. Star Wars is no different. It is also a reimagining of another classic Western motif, plucky individuals coming together to fight against the evil rancher and the corrupt officials he has in his back pocket. Star Wars is a story about good and evil, and there's no ambiguity. It is very clear what it considers good and what it considers evil. And how it communicates these ideas is in a very subtle but powerful way, through the use of visual aesthetics. It allows the audience to draw its own conclusions, make the ideas their own. The colors of the rebellion are creams and khakis, tans, light blues. They're warm, soft, comforting, nurturing, feminine. The colors of the empire, blacks, reds, snow white. They're harsh, stark, cold, aggressive, masculine. Imperial environments are all lines and angles, hard and industrial. Everything is new crisp and clean to the point of being sterile. People are like balls bouncing around the interior of some giant machine. Rubble environments are rounded edges and curves. They're handmade, old, worn, patched many times. They're cluttered, feel lived in. It's like your favorite jacket, old and worn out, but somehow it just feels right. The rebel guards on the diplomatic ship, every one of their uniforms is slightly different. You can see all their faces, their fear, and their resolve. This is a group of individuals who have chosen to be there, who choose to fight. On the other hand, we have the Imperial soldiers, stormtroopers. They're identical, faceless drones. The only reason they win is through sheer numbers and brute force. It's like the rebels have kicked over an anthill. Imperial TIE fighters are sleek and efficient. They represent the epitome of industrial design. Mass-produced, identical, easily replaced. They're also sterile, and they have no soul. Rebel fighters look a little rough around the edges, as if the design had never been completed. 
They have a one-off, handmade appearance. They're old, worn, faded, and heavily patched. Every fighter is unique. The Imperial Conference Room, you all know the scene. I find your lack of faith disturbing. That's a common perception of the corporate boardroom. Everybody wearing identical clothes, sitting around a table in a strict hierarchy, maneuvering, manipulating, backstabbing, doing whatever it takes to get one more step up on that corporate ladder. Contrast that with the Rebel Command Center. You have a group of people with very different outfits standing around the table. They move about freely, forwards, back, in front, and behind each other. Each one speaks up when they feel like they have something to contribute. You have the sense of a bunch of individuals coming together for a common cause. Star Wars' story is about an evil, corrupt, collectivist institution grinding down the little guy. And then you have a bunch of individuals who've come together to resist, to fight back, to rebel. The big message that audiences took away from Star Wars? All it takes, one man, one woman, to change the course of history. Who's qualified to be this one man, one woman? Anybody. Luke Skywalker represents the everyman. Anybody with the dream and a courage to step up and try to do something about it. Star Wars is an old school western. Individualism, self-reliance, physical courage, self-sacrifice, traditional American values. No wonder audiences in 1977 ate it up. It was like water in the desert. George's politics, worldview, agenda, they're well documented. The last thing he wanted to do was glorify the individual and condemn the collective. George has spent the last 45 years trying to take back control of the interpretation, impose his interpretation on the audience. This can be best exemplified by the whole who shot Han debate. For most Americans, what Han did was common sense. You point a weapon at somebody, you tell them you're going to kill them. They distract you, manage to get their hands on their own weapon, and shoot you before you can shoot them? Sorry about your bad luck. But there is a worldview where what Han did is treason. Communism. There is no right to self-defense under communism. Only the collective, i.e. the state, has the right to decide life or death. If you kill somebody in self-defense, you're rejecting the collective. You're committing treason. George can't have Han shoot first because that's the act of an individualist, not a collectivist. George's efforts to impose his interpretation on the audience has just earned him mockery and ridicule. I can tell you all the exact moment Star Wars as a franchise became irrelevant. Luke, I am your father. In an instant, Luke Skywalker was no longer an everyman. He was an elite, part of the aristocracy. I mean, we can't have the unwashed masses get uppity, get above their station. They might actually start thinking they can change things, heaven forbid. Add on top the Metachlorian bullshit from the prequels. Now, you just didn't need to be from the right social class, the elites. You now needed the right genetics. You had to be a superior being before you could change history. By the end of the prequels, George had lost the argument. Audiences had rejected his interpretation. On the other hand, there is no longer a shared cultural interpretation. In fact, I would argue there is no dominant shared interpretation. It's a big muddled mess. When the audience rejected George's interpretation, he got his feelings hurt. So he sold Star Wars to an institution that shared the same worldview, agenda, politics that he did. But he also thought it was big enough, powerful enough, strong enough to impose his interpretation on the audience. Disney Star Wars is less relevant than ever. Every time Kathleen Kennedy and Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant Leslie Headland opens their yaps, Star Wars becomes less relevant. To Lucas's chagrin, Disney doesn't care about Star Wars. All they care about is what Bob Iger called IP mining, 
so that they can push their agenda. George is feeling a little seller's remorse. I laugh every time I hear somebody say, George is coming back to save Star Wars. George has spent the last 40 plus years destroying Star Wars. If I can't have my interpretation, I'll burn it to the ground. The only reason why he's upset these days? Disney's destroying his interpretation as they burn Star Wars to the ground. Han shot first. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about. And until next time, y'all be safe. If y'all are still here, I really appreciate it. Thank you. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.